Welcome back to Tubi, your TV movie entertainment needs channel. Today, we're going to be doing our Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 spoiler-filled review. If you guys have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I do recommend stopping the video right here and checking our predictions video and then coming back once you have seen the movie. With all being said, let's get into it. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I mean... Well, what more can I say other than it's emotional heartbreak with a smile on your face? Uh, first things out of the gate I really want to talk about is the lack of death in the movie for the Guardians. None of them actually died. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm thoroughly shocked that we still got the full story of Rocket and everybody with him and nothing happened. And I think that's, you know, for my opinion, great. I'm glad no one died. I was not ready to handle all that. But what I also wasn't also ready to handle was Rocket's backstory. I did not think that was going to just be like a nut wrench or the way it was. Overall, this movie start to finish has been exactly what we've been needing from Marvel. Uh, of course, that when we when we talk about this movie, it's going to be uh, you know, high regard for this movie because it's 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 three chapters that span over almost ten years with the Guardians of the Galaxy, my favorite group on both screen and comic. And it, it was it was an emotional journey to finally see it go full circle. I cannot stress enough how great of a performance Bradley Cooper gave for Rocket Raccoon in both all three movies, but especially this movie, as it is very centered around Rocket. And as we later find out in this movie that this entire story has had Rocket be our main character. Well, I know Star-Lord has been presented as a, our protagonist. It's really been Rocket's story the entire time. Bradley Cooper, like I said, is phenomenal. He did great in this movie. He gives very... Great performances as uh, Rocket, both as, you know, through the years when he's growing up and then after he has this realization of who he truly is and that performance afterwards is just great. And Sean Gunn and everybody else was, was portraying the uh, progressions of Rocket in the backstory and the flashbacks was great. I mean, the, the hardest scene to watch is definitely Lila's death when he gives that that haunting scream of just the echoes throughout the, the, the little, you know, chamber and and having floor in a panic and and, and teeth just in a shock state it was it was just i broke me man a lot of this movie is surrounded by the guardians and the guardians specifically it's not drawing heavily from previous mcu movies there's some you know remarks here and there like what nebula was mentioning about what thanos did to her which is from the previous guardians movie uh, and some stuff when the blip i think but mainly it's been Guardians centered. And I even with the, all the post credits from the first movie back in 2014 to now has mainly been surrounding the Guardians and their entire journey. Now, I know that in the movie, we, you know, first one we see Thanos and he's hunting for the Infinity Stones, but that's branched out within other movies. That's not like the post credits leading to the other movies. And I've always liked that. It was kind of like an end game when we were all talking and kind of hoping that they wouldn't do a post credit because we kind of wanted just to experience this final chapter together. I'm glad that's what they did for the Guardians movie because it also sets up, you know, the other Guardians of the Galaxy with Adam Warlock and Rocket leading them. Everybody in there is great, but I think what this does perfectly is it keeps it centered and it doesn't need to grow more in the Marvel Universe. Like it's going to happen, but it's going to happen from other movies like they've always done. And I'm glad they kept that. And the music in this movie is absolutely just great. You know, as always, each volume after the other has been great and really is centered on the story. It builds from it. But what I've always enjoyed from all three movies is that the music is a diegetic form of the music, which means it's coming from the actual world we're having our narrative in, but also enhances the experience we watch. Like the hallway fight scene with No Sleep Till Brooklyn playing was easily top three favorite scenes in the entire maybe you know the best hallway fight scene that i've seen in a long time since daredevil perhaps the best one but i know that there were so many great moments in that movie and it's not gonna not be mentioned no sleep till brooklyn hallway fight scene gold but essentially this is the final chapter for the guardians and the way the movie ended i think was perfect where rocket is now full of love instead of this hatred towards the world like we saw in the first movie he was very bitter and always argumentative and he was always kind of avoiding things that made him face his past and in this movie we see him you know become okay with who he is and and realizing that he's not a mistake and that the past that has happened because of him helps him reach this family and and become the person he is now and i i love those stories of course at the ending where they're playing dog days are over just made me sob 
uncontrollably. I found that clip on, on YouTube. Someone posted it and I've been replaying like an idiot and crying all the time, but it's so beautiful. I can't stop watching it. But as much as this movie makes you, you know, cry, it makes you laugh just as much. And I mean, not the exact same, but still, it's very funny for what this movie was doing. And what I loved more importantly in the uh, dog days are over scene is the full circle, you know, change with these characters. Nebula, you know, f- like getting to see her laugh actually full of joy just fills me up with such uh, happiness because we've seen her kind of have experienced these, these first moment things in the MCU where in Guardians Volume 2, she had that epiphany with Gamora and saying like, I, I didn't need you to win. I needed a sister. And she's having that moment of, of realism with her sister. And then in, in Endgame, in the very beginning of the movie, we see her win something for a change. She she finally does something on her own out of, you know, playing the you know finger football game with Tony. And she's surprised to hear him say, you know, congratulations, you won, good game, all these different things. And then in this movie, finally experiencing that happiness and that peace and having that family it just is so heartwarming. And Drax dancing, that, I mean, was like a wind-up punch in the gut. Because he we never danced. He never danced in the movies. We, he always talked about how dancing was for, you know, idiots and everything. And they had that moment with, with Mantis and everything that he is an idiot. But in that movie, it comes full circle saying, like, you, you are the idiot, but it's for the right reasons. You know, like, you're not meant to be a destroyer. You were meant to be a dad, which damn you james gunn for writing that line because that hit me like a brick but the point is is that he me- he's meant to be that lovable idiot for those kids and and to to be that father figure again and be the father that he you know was originally but now he's taking care of this newfound group and the people of nowhere i do have a little little critique when it comes to adam warlock and it's the fact that i didn't get to see enough of him i mean we've been waiting for this guy for years and i just needed more I mean, Adam Warlock was great in the movie. I liked how they made him the child mindset with him so being, you know, very, very powerful villain. Am sad we're never going to see Thanos and him face off. I want to say that there's going to be something in the multiverse, but since we've kind of like done that with Thanos and the multiverse with it, you know, time travel, everything. Either way, I know it's not going to happen, but a girl can dream. But either way, I am very, very glad to see Adam Warlock done right. Both costume, powers, and uh, Will Porter was great. But I just didn't get enough. I wanted more. I'm sure we're going to see more of him in the future. I doubt this is the only time we're going to see him. There's there's no way they're not going to bring him in future movies. But I did want to see a little bit more of like that bad guy drive with him before having that full circle redemption where he does save Peter Quill, which in the theater, I'm like gripping my chair and sitting on the edge of my seat with tears in my eyes. No surprise. But just thinking like, this is how they're going to take out Star-Lord. And I really also thought, that they were going to have him do a new helmet uh, with, with that was going to be more the comic accurate look because, you know, they were going the comic accurate suit, which is, again, gold. But I, I think that would have been a great time for them to use the helmet. But, you know, James Gunn's story doesn't necessarily also match with the MCU because in uh, volume two, we see it get broken. And then in Infinity War, he's got it back, which was not his choice. That was the Ruth of Brothers. Not saying they're, you know, idiots or something. But James Gunn has recently come out saying that some of the choices that they made in those movies wouldn't necessarily be his choices, like, uh, you know, Star-Lord hitting Thanos and not pulling the trigger quicker uh, was kind of his critiques. But it's not thing that doesn't make sense in a way where it's continuous from the stories we've seen. But again, I would have liked to see that helmet, but it was a very good thing. It was a good combination with Star-Lord and Adam Warlock. Will Porter did great. Chris Pratt did great. I'm just overall thumbs up for this movie. Jakuti Uji is no doubt going to be the darkest, most brutal villain in the MCU. I know Thanos was pretty crazy, but for someone that is represented and for the high evolutionary, a human that you know, progressed himself throughout the years and, and put himself through experiments. And ultimately that's what it is in the comics. But in this movie, not really sure what his backstory is essentially. Maybe they change it, but that, that's the thing. They also don't go into it, which I think is good. It's not important, but either way, he was a lot. I mean, you couldn't help but just hate that guy, mainly because he was just so heartless. But uh, seeing the experiments he did with uh, just Rocket and Lila, and even the animals that we saw in that little chamber, just uh, just it was horrible. And this may sound weird, but you couldn't help but just watch when he was doing this performance because he did a great job as this bad guy. And the screaming did get a little annoying, but I, either way, he did great. And I think. I wish we could see more of him. 
Uh, but overall, phenomenal villain. And I, I, I don't know it's who's going to be top five anymore with him there. But I, I mean, if this is just what they got now, I'm super excited for what Kang's going to be like in the future and what other future villains are going to be getting like Galactus. But as of right now, Jakuti Wuji is top three for sure. I phenomenal. Jakuti Wuji jumping back and forth between DC and Marvel was great. And I don't know if anyone else ever caught this, but there were also two other DC actors that were in this movie from Peacemaker and The Suicide Squad. The two people in that movie were Jennifer Holland and Daniela Malacquart, who uh, Jennifer was the security lady at Orgo Corp. And Daniela was, I think, Yura, the purple girl that they hold hostage in the elevator. It was kind of fun seeing them bounce from the projects and kind of seeing them as like fun little cameos if you caught them. But as well is in The Suicide Squad, uh, Palm Clementip was one of the dancers at the bar. And then, of course, Sean Gunn being in both as either Weasel or Craglin, which Craglin, still great. We got to see more of Cosmo, the space dog. I was so happy to even just hear that Cosmo was in the holiday special, but now we got to see more of her. It was great. Maria Bakalova and Sean Gunn were a great duo back and forth as Cosmo and Craglin. I really liked their levity in the movie, and it was truly great to see more of Cosmo on the big screen. I hope that this is not the final appearance. I do want to talk a little bit about Gamora and the Ravagers. I think making Gamora an entirely different person from what we've seen in 2014 and 17 is brilliant. It kind of does remind me of that song by Celeste and the line being, you know, strangers to friends, friends to lovers, and then strangers again. is very heartbreaking to see in that line, that, ah, uh, the line where she goes, I bet we were fun. And then Star-Lord goes, you wouldn't believe it. It is, is heartbreaking to see. But, you know, it, it helps also kind of Peter move on from being with the Guardians because he was going to, you know, stay with Gamora, but it helps him move on to go back to Earth and be with his grandpa and, and kind of be his own thing and not anything with the Ravagers or the Guardians and just be Peter. I do think it was great, though, seeing more of the Guardians from Volume 2. We got Sylvester Stallone back as Takar, Michael Rosenbaum as Martin X, and in this time, instead of it being Miley Cyrus as mainframe, we had Tara Strong. Now, I was kind of hoping to see Michelle Yeoh as Aletta O'Gord and Bing Rames as Charlie 27, but maybe maybe there's a good chance the Guardians will return for a Disney Plus project, but it's the traditional Guardians, the ones we were seeing with Mainframe, Charlie, Aletta, Sakaar, and Martin X. Maybe they're going to have their own space adventures, similar to what their comic book was, because that's where the original Guardians was, plus Yondu, which is a fun little reference I caught in my rewatch for Volume 2, where uh, Yondu and Rocket were in that prison after they had the whole mutiny thing, and Yondu was like, you know, my friends, the old Ravagers, weren't so different than you and your group which is, I thought, a kind of a fun little nod. But and maybe that something could happen. Maybe. Hopefully so. We've also had a Howard the Duck cameo go through all three movies, voiced by Seth Green. And also, the broker was also in there very quickly during the poker scene. Thought it was kind of cool that he survived the Xandar scene and he's now either stationed on Nowhere or with the Ravagers. Either way, it was really great to see, as well as Howard, now an official Ravager. I can go on and on for how great this movie is for both music, visuals, but what this ultimately is, is the last straw for Guardians. And having it go out in this very cinematic, very heartbreaking, and very joyful way is something that I couldn't believe almost 10 years ago because when, when their first movie came out not a lot of people knew about the guardians i had a brief you know summary of what they were but didn't know enough to kind of be excited i was still kind of skeptical as we were kind of i think during that time you know, dark world came out so we were a little hesitant for this new movie but i remember going to see that movie with my dad and we both walked out we didn't say a word which is very rare for a lot of movies where we don't have something to talk about like whether it's a great scene or whatever we were stunned from the moment we sat down to the moment we got in the car, it was, we were just taken away because I feel like there's nothing that happened like that before and nothing can happen like that again, because I don't think a movie like this could ever happen again, not just for Marvel, but just period having this, you know, ragtag misfit desperados of just these group of people that were broken coming together to make this family and this team that, you know, started off as only five and ended with nine it's it's great to see this transitional story go from, you know, these criminals to heroes to guardians and it ultimately just being the last, you know, period of the sentence of the book that was Guardians of the Galaxy. I am forever changed by just not only this movie, but second one and the first one, mainly because James Gunn had a vision for these movies and it was executed perfectly. And the way they did these movies with the music and the comedy 
was just unmatched. The second one's a little controversial with most people because it, it doesn't have that charm as the first one because I, I don't disagree. It's not the first one. It's the second one, which is meant to progress the stories. And I think when you rewatch it and not focusing on trying to have it live up to number one, you can focus on the, you know, the minute details for each of the characters that we're building for not only this movie, but the last movie and the overall encompassing story that was the Marvel Universe. The VFX look great, finally. It's been a long time since we've had that. We had some good runs with Black Panther. We had some good runs with Shang-Chi and some Spider-Man. And I think a lot of phase four was a lot of hit and miss. But like I said, we had some good ones. In my last video that I said, you know, like Shang-Chi, Spider-Man, and Black Panther, I think were the standouts. But this one being a part of phase five is it's going to be really hard to beat with the next Marvel movie. And I, 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 I'm just at a loss for words. It's so great. If you haven't seen it, please go see it now. I know it's weird to do that in a spoiler video, but go see it. Overall, I get this movie a one out of 10. But with that one, put another one in front of it because it's an 11 out of 10. It's so freaking good. If you get the chance to go see it in IMAX, I highly recommend go seeing it in IMAX. It's really good on the big screen with all the colors and the just even just the screen ratio with it. Seeing everything in its glory is great. Love the movie. Love the music. Love the Guardians. And I'm just now saying this. I loved King Groot. I love Buff Groot. He is, I think, my number one favorite Groot. Maybe King Groot as we get more into that character, which is something we saw at the post credit. But King Groot was awesome to see even for that one second. But mainly Groot uh, that can also regenerate quicker. I don't know if you guys caught that. But when he was putting in the, the rest of his body and after becoming that head spider thing, it was really cool to see how he's a different Groot from what we saw in the first movie because I think a lot of people were missing that that this Groot in Volume 3 is not the same Groot as we saw in 2014, because that Groot is dead, but was reborn from that twig, grew up to be this thing, and now King Groot, awesome. Also, if a lot of people are maybe reading something that's going on online, the I Love You Guys is not him speaking English. It's way better than that. So the meaning of it is actually us finally understanding Groot, as the family did all throughout these years. Because if you notice that everyone in the family of the Guardians was finally understanding Groot rather than just Rocket. So it's not him speaking to us, it's us hearing him. We're finally a part of this family and we understand Groot. Which, when I read that, another wind up gut punch. Because I, it's just a perfect note to end on where we are a part of this family that we all know and love. But with that all being said, that has been my spoiler filled review. If you guys are interested, check out the other videos that we have. And a new episode is coming out over our spoil filled episode on our podcast. It's going to be coming out this Wednesday. So be sure to click the bell for notifications, like, and subscribe. So you guys are caught up from when we post. But also be sure to check us out on Letterboxd. I constantly update the MCU watch list because I'm always watching other movies. So some things get changed around. It's never the same thing for more than maybe a week, but I updated it now for this movie. It's going to be on our letterbox in the description below. Go check it out. Also be sure to check us out on TikTok and Instagram. We're posting a lot of stuff there. Some stuff I don't post on the other one. So you never know which one you're going to get. And like I also mentioned, our letterbox constantly updating, watching all sorts of movies. That's also going to be coming back to the podcast. We're trying something new coming real soon. Also be sure to comment your thoughts about the movie, maybe what your favorite song is, your favorite character, your overall thoughts about the movie. Thank you guys again for watching. See you next time.